In this session, we will talk about how to supercharge your creator business with human-like AI copywriting. And I have Audrey Shia, and she's the founder of Close With Copy, which is a hybrid human and copywriting consultancy that blends the best of high-level strategy with smarter AI execution. I think that's really cool. And we were chatting here in the pre-chat as well. Like, what's, what's a good angle for this session? Because I have a lot of sessions that I do in this series. And I think human like AI copywriting sounds very compelling and also like showcasing a lot of examples around this is what we're going to dive into here. But uh, first, well, warm welcome, Audrey. Thank you so much for having me, Navid. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. And uh, just how we connected was that I saw that you're posting a lot on LinkedIn and you're just an up and coming creator there. You're posting really great content. So I reached out and here we are. So now you're going to share some amazing value. And I've seen the stuff you prepared. It's quite amazing. But before we get into that, how did you get into the world of AI and kind of what it is that you do on a day-to-day -day basis with this? Yeah. So um, again, right, I run my own consultancy, Close with Copy. And the funny thing was, I only launched it this year. So prior to this, I was already working with multiple clients, but I also had a day job. So this year was the year I decided that I'm going to quit my day job and go on into my consultancy. And guess what happened? Chat GPT arrived. <laughs> so, so interestingly, one of my clients reached out to me and he said this thing, and this line changed my life forever. He said, Audrey, you're going to be replaced. And then he sent me the link of Chat GPT. And there was a moment I saw the potential of AI and I thought to myself, I have two options, right? One is that I fight the current or the other option would be for me to write the type. And I chose the letter and there was no turning back ever since. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, of course, like since ChatGPT was released, I was even knowing about this world since kind of Jasper. And that's when the generative AI came into the world before we had like a lot of other things. I mean, there's people do, doing AI for decades, right? But like with like Grammarly and tools like that, it became more accessible. The script editing tools uh, and yeah, now with all these different AI tools popping up left and right. But I think you come back to, I guess, ChatGPT a lot for doing your work and for clients, but also for your for yourself to create content. So why don't we dive into this a little bit? I am interested to hear maybe first, what is human-like copywriting? What is the definition in your your eyes? What, what does it look like? Because yeah, you can create the copy with AI, right? You can go into ChatGPT and just prompt it and see if you get get something good out of it. But what, 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 how do you get like, so it sounds like a real human, so people cannot even identify that this might be AI generated. Yeah, and before we dive in, right, one tiny story would be, I tested this with a client. Yeah. Um, he was a founder. Yeah. And I challenged him to post my AI content that was 100% written by AI without his input and compared it to his actual post to see which performed better. And guess which one won? My one. <laughs> so I was really proud about that because I managed to craft something with strategy, right? And the audience mm -hmm. in mind, and yet sound exactly like him. So nobody could tell it was air generated. Um, yeah, that, that, that's awesome, actually. This is great because I think, I think that people need to take the extra time to make it sound like you, human-like, as you like to call it. So, I mean, otherwise it doesn't convert either. That's the point with copy and, and or any form of content. It should connect with your audience, should they drive the point home, like if it doesn't sound like you, people will find out. And it's not no personality there. You sound like everyone else, right? How much like would you say when you're creating content or copy for clients or yourself, how much is like, the, how much does the AI do? And how much would you say that you come in and make it your own? What was yeah. that? You have like a percentage for each part or time that it takes? Yeah, definitely. So for me, right, I always talk about the human AI strategy. I never solely read on AI tools. I think that it's great, but I think that human touch the element and for you to review the re and refine the results, that's when you can achieve quality at scale because you're not just relying on skill, right? Skill doesn't mean quality. Skill could mean a lot of AI-generated content that sounds super robotic. So for example, um, an example will be on LinkedIn. If you hear content that says, attention founders or uh, uh, listen up, and then it has like three emojis at the back, uh -huh. Those are really, really obviously AI generated and you don't want that, right? So the yeah. only way for your content to be effective is if you combine that thinking of what makes a good post and then you think, how can I structure it or format it? And then you think, how can I use AI to execute on that framework? Because you already know what makes a good post. 
So I'm never asking ChatGPT to write, for example, a landing page for me. I'm telling ChatGPT, this is my vision for a high conversion landing page. This is the context. This is the audience. This is your tone of voice. Now write it for me. And that's the difference between human-like content and really pure yeah. AI-generated content. Yeah, you're giving, you're giving clear instructions, essentially. I always give this analogy to people like, or other guests I've spoken to, like, imagine you hire an intern or an employee in your business or a writer, it can be anything. You would go back and forth, right? You would not just expect like, hey, write this, uh, you know, 10,000 word sales page or something like that. You would not do that. Like, you, that would take, that would not be the way to do it. So you would go back and forth. You will give instructions. And so if you're treating ChatGPT or the AI tool you're using as a human, I think you're getting better re re response. Like I know, yeah, from, prompts is all the rage, right? It's everywhere. But I think if you're forgetting about this, I think also we are moving into more promptless AI. It's going to be less with prompts in the future. I think that's going to go away a little bit because that's already in other tools like built in behind the scenes. So I think it's like learning how to just instruct it based on your audience, kind of the way you described it. You're clear on your audience, you're clear on your messaging, these things, then you're going to get better output from ChatGPT, right? Or the AI tool you might be using. So I 100% agree with you there. Yeah, I think the beauty is, when, is in when you combine like the strategy with the execution. So just because I post mm -hmm. LinkedIn content doesn't mean it will convert. I have to first take a step yeah. back and think, what are the themes that resonate with my audience? This is not something that, of course, you can prompt for, but you still need to take a step and think, what is exactly your thought process? So there is still like high level thinking behind um, AI content. And a lot of people, they either one, don't know how to use um, AI to their maximum advantage, or two, mm. they are very fearful of it. Um, but from my own experience and running my own consultancy, I can still deliver on high quality work, combine the AI expertise and deliver quality at scale. So I'm not going to be replaced, but I'm just going to be able to leverage the tools to my maximum advantage. Yeah, so I think this is a good segue into kind of sharing about this and actually demonstrating that this process works. I mean, some people might feel overwhelmed about there's so many AI tools, but I think if you're getting started, like ChatGPT is a great starting point and get the plus plan. Like I'm not an affiliate for it, I wish, but I, I'm not. Like they just like good. I use the plus plan all the time for certain things, ideation or some of the plugins that's, that works right now for box script or whatever it is. I use it all the time. So I think that's what you use as well, Audrey. And that's what we, that's what we are going to use basically GPT-4 at the time we're recording this, that's what's out. So we're going to use the latest model and uh, showcase how, what kind of results we can get with this. Yes. Oh, cool. So let me share my screen. I think we can go through quite a number of stuff today and I can just share my thought process. Again, before diving into the actual prompts, I always think about the strategy. So this is something that I created for marketing teams to launch with speed. As you can see here, my prompts are not a oh, one-liner <laughs> prompts. Day. My prompts are full on and this is not even the, the most in-depth prompt. This is something I can share with uh, the public, but I do have even more robust prompts depending on the client's needs. So yeah. everything I do is tailored for an end result. Let's take a look at like landing page prompts, right? In this case, instead of asking ChatGPT, hey, can you write a landing page for me? I'm telling it again what I want it to create. So this is a simple prompt that I constructed. For example, a sales company. You start off with the role and you get it to be an expert conversion copywriter who specializes in crafting compelling websites they convert. And I wanted to craft a website copy for my company. And over here, the important part is to really teach it, right? What kind of guidelines should they be following? So your company name, what you do, target audience, tone of voice, and even your call to action. So the more specific you are, the better your results. And right here, this is the part where most people find a um, hard to create, which is their USPs. So even before thinking about a landing page, we would probably do a strategic consult where I'll ask you, okay, who is your audience? What features do you have? Out of these 10 features, what are the three core features that your audience would want? And how do we turn them into benefits for your audience? What is your main value prop? So you can see there's a lot of thought that goes into creating this prompt because there is a strategic kind of angle to it, even before creating a landing page prompt. Yeah, you know what? It's like the, you need to know, that I always say this, you need to know what is good copy to identify good copy. So if you're just going into ChatGPT and expecting to get this amazing results without be, without knowing what it is, you don't need to be world-class copywriter to do it, but you need to know what goes into like a landing page, what sections are on your landing page. And then you can create a model that kind of is adapted 
to work with ChatGPT, maybe you have the headline, then you have like a subtitle, then you have some bullet points for this. So you can I get, kind of tell that's kind of what you are doing here. So you get it in a format that you can just, okay, now we have the, and then you have the page builder or something where you put in this copy later, right? For a landing page. So you can like insert this afterwards a lot easier rather than just telling, hey, ChatGPT, create me a landing page or give me a landing page copy. It's going to be very generic and not in the format you want it. So this is for sure a great way to do it. I, I do like this and it's very, very specific. Yeah, so like when you said, right, the more context you give it, the better your results. And even here, right, when I gave it the structure, it was not about me telling it, please create landing page with 500 words for me. It's me breaking down each section because I knew what I was looking for. And this is from me studying hundreds of landing pages to figure out the components that make something work and then putting them together based on my own experience and expertise. So you can see here that it's really combining the best of your knowledge right, and experience together with AI execution for a lot faster kind of um, generation of copy in a quality manner. So if I were to scroll down, you can see things like why us, key benefits, social proof, even apart from before and after. A lot of people forget about that a case study section, testimonials, FAQs, and so on. If you have more content for your company, then what you would do is to put it here in this section here, and then ChatGPT will just pull out the content from section one and populate it into section two, which is the structure right here. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Do, do you want to see an example of how it looked like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be great to bring this into to ChatGPT as well to showcase this in action, like to okay. do something live. You know, Let's make it interactive yeah. so you tell me what is your company name <laughs> now we could say like let's not take mine let's just take something <laughs> yeah, yeah, like let's take something different like mine i use mine all the time i prefer to just take something okay, <laughs> i so use it all the time something. i have this example for an essential oil brand that i used to, to work with it's called essen so essen yeah. is actually a pet safe essential oil that's certified by vet and the reason why it's interesting is because a lot of essential oils are not pet safe, but not everybody knows that. So this is an interesting problem to solve. How would you create a landing page for that? Right. Yeah. And my target audience could be families with pet mid to high income. And they might have a love for lifestyle products if they're using essential oils at home. Right. Lifestyle products. Sometimes it comes. So for no boys, I want it to be and, and over here, I'm giving you a really simple example, but when I come for tone of voice, I will actually feed ChatGPT other examples and then get it to learn a tone of voice even before embarking on a learning page prompt. So it will be a multi-stage prompt instead of just one single prompt because when you break it up, ChatGPT is able to understand and interpret it a lot better than if you had to combine it into a single prompt. And this is from me testing lots of prompts, so I know it works when I separate the instruction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like going back and forth a little bit because otherwise it can be too much. So it's good. Okay. And then community driven. Okay. And then the call to action is by now. So let's say USPs once, right? So when you're thinking about USPs at your unique selling point, don't think about the features you have. Think about the benefits to the audience. That's usually what I would tell my clients. But in this case, because it's a product, it's a lot more straightforward. So we can put like 100% say not organic and then we could say it's certified by vet and then maybe we could say that it's uh, I don't know like eco-friendly whatever okay so yeah. with this now we can send chat GPT the instructions and we can take a look at the prompts at the output so here you can see it even section it for me your hero our clients and then why us and then key benefits okay so the the thing about this is that V1 will never be perfect. V1 of any prompt will never be perfect. And what you have to do is iterate on the prompt. You have two options. One, in which you can edit the copy here with this button and it will give you a new kind of output. Or two, you could follow up with more instructions. So we could show you option two and then we can see how to go from there. So right now I'm looking at the V1 of ChatGPT's output, right? So let's take a look at it. It says, um, Elevate your lifestyle without compromising your pet's health. It's okay, but I don't love it. It's not punchy enough. Yeah. So, would you, Audrey, would yes. you say that you the, the V1, the version one of the output it gives you, you feel that you you usually tweak it, right? It's not yes. it's not it's, it's never not the final one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. rare. 
it's hard yeah. work. It takes lots of iterations. So you will never yeah, get it the first time forth. around. But, it but it's a lot faster than doing it like the old way was to do it like you write it from scratch. You maybe have, you check other things, but now you can do it with AI a lot faster. But yeah, it's, as you said, it's like, takes time. If you want to make it sound like you and make it convert, which is the most important thing here, this is a landing page. So you want it to convert. It's just not about putting some words on a page here that ChatGPT spits out. It's actually going to be the right words you put on that page. Yeah, that's that's the important thing. So things I would actually do even before this prompt would be, firstly, I would have a prompt that allows me to understand my audience insights, pull out their pain points and desires. Ideally, we get it from actual customer transcripts. We can put it to ChatGPT, analyze their transcripts for insights. Or you ask ChatGPT to develop personas for you and develop insights based on its imaginary persona. And usually ChatGPT4 is pretty accurate when it comes to that. How, how do you do that usually? This is, this is I'm sure, valuable for people. So you develop personas, basically. So you said you can, uh, yeah, you can upload PDFs and stuff like that. I find it sometimes glitchy. I use sometimes the plugin still, but it, it's at the time we record, I'm sure it's going to get better. But yeah, you can upload transcripts, text, a lot of text like to, to it. But yeah, you have still have a limit with ChatGPT and the token limit. So the, kind of the memory and all these things, that's the, that's the downside, I would say. If you have like a longer PDF or a longer transcript or something like that, you cannot upload everything. <laughs> so yeah. So there are two ways to do it, right? One is like what you say. You have the audience transcript and then you upload it. Um, yeah. The other way, which is really interesting, is this. I developed this based on real clients and real needs. So I'm very, you can be sure that they are not just, they're not just for show, right? Because I'm actually using it and, and it works. So for example, I developed a prompt firstly, where I got it to be an experienced audience researcher and brand strategist. And I wanted to develop deep and detailed interview questions to help me gain audience insights for my brand. And then I gave it a whole list of questions in which I wanted to, do, to dive into. So this is stuff from me as well, but to get to here, I actually reverse prompted with some output. So anyway, it's about finding different ways to solve problems, right? So I created prompt one, which gives me a list of questions for my audience. And then prompt two says, now I want you to put yourself in the shoes of my target audience and response to the questions you have just generated. <laughs> so you can see it's a bit meta, but you can get it to generate the prompts and the question and the answers. Uh, it's totally possible. No, I actually, ChatGPT is pretty good at that. I noticed it as well. Like I, I've seen some people that you can, yeah, you can ask ChatGPT to come up with the use cases for a tool. Like even for, let's say, has ChatGPT come up with the use cases for this specific thing? And then you can generate the prompts for this. Maybe you want to know more about email marketing. So it generates the questions that you need to know about email marketing. And then you can generate the prompts to kind of get the output you would like to get. So that's yeah. pretty, it's pretty meta, but it works. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's about solving a puzzle, right? So ChatGPT yeah. is a tool, but it's hard. how about how creative you get on how do you get your end output? So I'm just finding different ways to use it. And then I'm stringing it into one line. And then now you have audience insights. You have maybe value proposition. You have landing page. And then after landing page, you can create emails and ads. All with AI. Yeah, let's go back to the example like you showed like in ChatGPT to go through this process because you weren't 100% happy with what came out. So what would you do to change this? Okay, yeah. maybe going back to this, right? Yeah, so I don't like the way firstly it sounds. I think it's a bit too cliche. So as mm -hmm. a, a kind of, even a simple prompt like, can you make it less cliche? I think you're an amazing brand copywriter. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but let's try it. I would just tell you exactly what I feel, right? Can you make the copy less cliche sounding? So you... I want it to be sharp and easy. So even something like that, right? Just to test to see what kind of result it would give you, right? And now you can see that it's actually going to the other end of the spectrum of it's a bit thin, but it's a bit too much. So there's a scale of what yeah. ChatGPT wants to give you, right? So it's about balancing it and thinking, how can I give it the best instruction? to mm -hmm. get to where I want to be. And even something like that, I could be like, can you please tone it down by 20%? That is a problem by itself. So thinking of it as a num putting a number it's to the skill, it also helps as well. But it looks like you're just basically, you're having a conversation with, yeah, there's these like mega prompts and all this you can use. I mean, 
it's basically just adding instructions. That's what it is. That's what this is. You're adding like that to ChatGPT. And to get now better responses, what do you need to do? You need to refine it by asking questions, like by adding, say, hey, can you please do this? Can you add this, you know, a little bit more of this into it? And then it's just going to improve, like over, it takes a few iterations, as you said. Let's see what comes out here, if you are getting a little bit happier with it. So let's see, right? Okay, the headline says, no more side eye from whiskers. This is too much for me. (laughs) I do not (laughs) think that it works, right? And then it has pause and applause from, so... It took the feedback too literally. Like when I say sharp and witty, I think it went crazy on, on, on that. So too much, too much. So what I would do from here is I would say like, okay, like what you said, a conversation, right? So yeah. let's take a step back. Let's start with section one. Okay. I want you to give me 10 headline options. And then think of the target audiences. Pain points and desires. So now I'm writing it to because it's going away from what I want because any copy that works always sets on insights, right? No more side eye from whiskers is fun, but it doesn't talk about the target audience insights. It doesn't talk about the brand. So now I want to just start with section one. And then we try to figure out, can I shape it to where I want it to go? So when it ties back to the target audience's pain points and desires, that is also looking at the audience insights, right? So I'll take a look at, okay, what kind of copy and angle they are actually providing? And then I'll think, is this something for me? And then we could explore more in that direction. So over here, you can see what it has done is it has tried to retain the witty tone of voice. And that's not something that I actually enjoy because I think it's a bit too much. For example, Mm -hmm. like where fragrance... Maybe like writing more like conversational or something like that. I I, I mean, that... Depends on how you want to write it. But like, yeah, I think, so, for example, for my blog or for my writing, I, I tend to make it more conversational and, and like more approachable like to, to the audience. Yeah, definitely. So it takes a bit of exploration. But what I would actually have done is in the base prompt, right, I wouldn't have just kept it as this. I would actually have fed it an example of my tone of voice. I would have fed it a lot more content about my audience insights. So the output will yeah. be a lot more You can robust. try this example in a little bit here because I think you have, you, let's say we can also take your example because you have LinkedIn posts and stuff like that and we can tell them to do an, like do some other example. Like you can take one of your favorite LinkedIn posts, for example, and we can do a similar example to write something based on that. Like to try to tell ChatGPT maybe to analyze something you have done that is popular and then come up with something similar based on that. I think that is a good use case as well. Let's try this as an expert. And I always use expert brand copywriter. Can you analyze the tone of voice and style of writing for this page? This is actually my own website. So I'm trying to see if we can pull okay. my tone of voice from this. And then we Maybe can see take the because you don't have, I mean, it depends how much you have on the, if you, the more content you have, the better, I think. But if you, I think what would be, if it works to so take like one of your, maybe you can copy because the LinkedIn posts are not that long. Usually you can probably copy your LinkedIn posts and try to analyze one of your most popular posts or even it doesn't matter if it's yours or anyone's, but you can take like Justin Welsh post, analyze that. And then, Hey, I want a post in a similar style like this. And that works Definitely. pretty well. I've just, I've, I've used that strategy a lot, actually. That is quite useful. Definitely. So the other way that, um, so I think right now, right, it, Something, the prompt is okay, but it's not that great. But basically, if you are able to get a full prompt, which I've managed to achieve previously, I'll take that prompt, then I'll put it back into the landing page prompt, and then we can see how that goes. The other thing Mm. that you just mentioned is like here, let me take a look at custom instructions. So for those of you who do not know what custom instructions are, they are a way for you to save different roles or profiles in GPT, and you could use different instructions for different purposes. So you can see here that I have a conversion copywriter, a landing page, brand strategies, template okay. generator. So over here, I'll also oh, you added multiple. Oh, that's really cool, actually. You can <laughs> save multiple. Yeah, because my the, yes, I, I think I, I I saw this as well quite recently. But uh, yeah, you can have multiple. So if you have multiple clients or multiple personas or whatever, you can just add it in there, which is really cool. I, yeah, I think that's and great. this is what you said, right? About getting into templatize. So I have also a templatize template generator that I use for other stuff. So for example, I get it to analyze my template and include placeholders 
and even include like a word count for each sentence, right? So I save this and then we'll start a new chat. And now, right now we can try something for- Before we uh, get into the, what, what is important when we just, just something on custom instruction, what, what do you feel is important to put in there? Like any, anything about, because you have a limit on the words, I think as well. So you need yeah. to put in the most important stuff there. Yeah. So I think importantly, the second part of the custom instructions, actually this is the key part, like what exactly are you looking for? And the thing is that, it will always respond in the format that you give. So even if you don't intend for it to respond that way, it basically takes that as your structure and will give you that structure every single time. So you, if you're using this custom instruction, you need to have something in mind. Why are you using it? And what is the output that you're actually looking for? The more specific you are about your structure or output, the better it is. Even something like here, right? A performance strategist. I put this performance strategy persona from a book about cycling. And it was about reverse engineering, right? So for the example that I gave it, I wanted it to structure how it would reverse engineer a problem based on the example that I've given. So for a team of four cyclists, this is what they need. And I want it to dive deeper into each section. And I give you an example of what it looks like. And then I want it to give me at least five questions for each breakdown and three solutions. So you can see yeah. how specific I am about my responses. I think you, yeah, that's awesome. You can add also about like your, the paragraph lengths and all these things in there. Like you want simple sentences and stuff like that. That's kind of something I do a lot. And also if you want to cite sources, I think that works really well because maybe you're writing something for a blog or whatever that is. And you want to keep that in mind and not just let ChatGPT. It's going to be difficult for you to find where it took all the information from afterwards. So I, I do this sometimes that's as well. That's super cool. I didn't think about the citing sources. Yeah, that's a great use case. <laughs> Would definitely yeah, test yeah. it out. Yeah. So going back to let's sure. say what you say about the template generator, right? Now I have this prompt. I save it. And then let's go to LinkedIn, right? Um, so let's say you, you're talking about Justin. And Justin has really good copy and he has mastered the art of writing on LinkedIn. So what you want to do is basically just copy the post. Uh, let me see if I can copy it here. My screen is a little yeah, bit. I think a lot of people don't know that you can, like ChatGPT is amazing at analyzing different things. I think that is one of the, one of the best use cases, I think, for it. Because then you can get unlimited ideas and things like that based on something that's already working. It's already proven to work. And not only Justin, but you can also look what up and coming creators are doing. He's, he, probably anything he posts will do pretty well now because he has a lot of followers, but you can look at someone like even Audrey, which has fewer followers than him. But if something goes viral that you create is more likely that would work for an up and coming creator to a similar style, because that's been proven. Like if you get you, I don't know, you have a few thousand followers, right? If you get like a post that goes viral, like with tons of traffic, that's probably a pretty good format of a post for other people to try out. Yeah, definitely. So I think um, what I normally do is give ChatGPT the prompt and then give it the template or the framework that I want and then it creates new copy based on that. And then I add in my own context for the new topic, which is why it's so exciting because now you figure out how do you crack the code and then now you use the code for yourself. <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah. when sometimes um, GPT doesn't understand like the full instructions, right? So you, but it takes time for you to figure out what is the right prompt to get to the right results. And that's why prompting isn't as simple as what most people would assume. Um, they think that it's just a one-liner they can steal. But the ideal prompt is always crafted with care and with thought and figuring out how do I get my, my end output. So think of it like an experiment um, and you are yeah, trying to solve same, problems. Yeah, <laughs> I 100% agree because... People are thinking like you can just ask one question and you're going to get all this out. You, you can like have a conversation with ChatGPT. That's for sure. Any AI tool, you can go back and forth. But I think like you wouldn't give just a one-liner to an intern or an employee to do the work properly for you. You would have like probably an SOP, like processes and things like that for them. It's kind of similar. Like how do you expect ChatGPT to do the work for you if you don't give them pro give it proper instructions? I think that's kind of the same thing there a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So you can see here that it has analyzed actually a lot more than what I expected. It analyzed the content itself as well as the format. So once you have the framework here, you can take the framework, pop it into a prompt or continue the conversation and ask it to generate an output for you for a different kind of content. And then you refine from there. But I, I always have to say that you have to review and refine the work in order to make it yours. Don't just take it at face value. 
always edit the content. Let, let's use this, Audrey, now, because I know you create a lot for LinkedIn or you can do it for another, let's say it can be you or a client, whatever. Let's say you like this format or you like kind of similar. You want to create, come up with something, like maybe they can come up with some ideas. That's also something we use ChatGPT for a lot, right? So maybe come up with an idea what to write about in this format of Justin's post we, we just put in there. So we can showcase a real example of what this, this process actually looks like. Yeah. So for me, I would actually come up with the ideas first before coming yeah. up with the copy. So in this case, let's just try, right? Um, yeah. Can you... That's, that's yes. for sure. I do also the ideation, like you have a bunch of ideas to take from. I think that's good, but you can also like have it analyze maybe the top because it's good sometimes to see what works on the platform like LinkedIn. Or in my case, I create a lot of long form content. So I might already have a video like this or something like this. So I can like get the transcript or I can get the video link. I can use like box script or something like that. I can use like the takeaways. And after I might craft my LinkedIn post or my Twitter thread, or whatever that is, based on the long-form content. It depends a little bit how you are creating your content. Where is your main content? If in your case, Audrey, I think it's for LinkedIn. You primarily focus there. I do more like these summits and videos and things like that. So I might use this content to create my other content. So I don't, so I can repurpose it to different platforms, essentially. Yeah, super cool. So yeah, I, I, like what you said, it's about thinking about your end output. How do you get there? In yeah. this case, they got me like the format of it and what I would have done is probably say as an expert copywriter who knows this is about my company so I'm not I will never ask it to write a post in a one-liner there will always be more context but this is just an example of how it would take Justin's format um, analyze it and then create more content around it of course I think this is a bit too long for LinkedIn so I might sharpen it afterwards but it's just an example one what do you find working for LinkedIn? Just cu curious because you have created quite a bit. Like, what do you see like yourself and for top creators on the platform? What do you see like in the length? Every platform has the unique things that's working, right? So, yeah. so I know Carousel is really popular, but like the length, I'm talking the length and kind of what goes into the post usually. I've tested so much. So <laughs> over the past six months, I have grown from about zero to 13K followers. And, and that's really true. Taking LinkedIn as a growth channel. And when I say growth channel, right, I'm experimenting. Every single post is an experiment. I track and record everything to make sure yeah. when and how to excel. The posts that have done really well are posts that basically is a massive value add to your audience. So there are creators that do text-only posts, which I admire. But for myself, my most valuable posts are carousels. They are value-packed. And, and it breaks down my thought process behind something behind converter copywriting, behind strategy. Um, and when people consume that kind of content, I think uh, they appreciate it and they engage and they share, then that's when you see the spikes. So instead of posting every day and posting text-only posts, I post tw twice or thrice a week with really very bad co content. So every post needs to be geared for conversions. Otherwise, there's no point posting oh, okay. it. Okay, In interesting. So you don't, you don't post like every day. So like some creators post every day. No, okay. so for me, it's really, I, I really see it as being strategic about the time you spend. Second mm -hmm. point that most people don't realize is that it's a social platform. You have to engage more than you post. You spend 80% of your time engaging, 20% of your time posting, and LinkedIn yeah. rewards you for that because of its mm -hmm. algorithm. And the engagement is a little bit like promoting your profile because you're seen there, right? So a lot of people, if you post like, if you comment with engaging and, and thoughtful comments, right? Not just any comment, like to say, hey, this was a great post. That, that wouldn't do anything. I think you need to add something to the content that is posted on the platform. I think that works well. And then other people might click to your profile and you will grow. So because people see your profile coming up and you have commented on other posts or liked them or things like that. And if you're early, I assume you like show up in the, you show up like as the top comment. Yeah. That can help. So they are, it's really strategic. If you were to engage with a power creator, basically someone with a bigger following, try to do it within the first 10 or five minutes actually, because once they, they will engage with you in the first few minutes and that's when your comment gets pushed to the top. If you're yeah. engaging with a smaller size creator or someone like yourself, then just be consistent because that's how you build Revo and mm -hmm. you build a community around it. How well. do you how do you schedule that? Do you do it like on a daily basis? Do you know when the big creators are posting, or do you have like a schedule for it, like timed uh, when you should comment every day or engage with others? So the interesting thing is that a lot of the really big LinkedIn creators who have made it, they are rigorous in their scheduling. <laughs> so some people create Excel sheets. Uh, I don't do that. I just 
push the bell notifications and I sort of internalize their timings uh, that they post, you have to think of it as like, like a sport. It's not for leisure. It's not for fun. Uh, LinkedIn, of course, can be enjoyable, but you must remember why are you on the platform in the first place? And if it's for your work, it's for career, you have to treat it like an athlete. <laughs> it's a game and you got to be in it. That's how I win. And that's how I think you can scale really, really fast. If you treat it like work, if you treat it like a profession and you find a way yeah. to, to grow and scale with speed. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a valuable platform, a lot of great content. When I started out like 10 years ago, it's a spammy platform. Now LinkedIn has like become <laughs> a lot better. So I, I do like LinkedIn a lot. And I, that's why I wanted to have you on here to talk more about it. But let's get back to the example a little bit to get that into kind of a post that we can actually post on LinkedIn potentially yeah, uh, so from maybe, this framework. Maybe what I would share is also like before, because again, right, this frame, I always emphasize it's not about creating a template and just adding content in there. It's about of the course. strategic work before that. So for me, right, even before diving into You start with the end in mind like a little bit. It's yeah. like I start, yeah, <laughs> when I create products and, and things, I start always with the end in mind. So I think that's important. I think it just helped, like even Justin had like a system for LinkedIn. I think he had like, a lot of templates and things like that as well Ooh. for like how to put like different forms of posts that does well and things like that. So you can analyze different things, but you need to... Uh, obviously know what is your audience? What is the topics? Who do you want to engage with? Who do you want to reach? What's the call to action? Even if it's like a value post, it's still like a call to action in some way or another. So yeah, yeah. definitely. So like what, I, like what you actually mentioned, right? I think you are the best person to talk about it. But the idea is being able to first strategize before using AI. That is very important. So even for me, when I come up with LinkedIn content ideas, this could be one way in which you can create a content matrix, right? So for example, as a LinkedIn strategist, I want you to develop a content strategy for me using the matrix that I'm going to provide you, right? And I want your output to be three proposed content buckets per theme, per funnel, per stage. So this is me already thinking about themes and funnels and uh, content buckets, right? It's three things that I want to include. I also want a suitable hook and I want a hook for each bucket. And I want a one-liner description of what I should talk about. And I want it to be structured as a table. Then I give it the context again, your name, role, company, description, target audience, the themes that you want. And then we move on to the fun stuff. So this is where mm -hmm. I created a matrix for it. You have copyright. I like this a lot. This is really cool. I'm <laughs> sure people who are watching or listening into this, they find this valuable because if you're, yeah, if you're checking this out, this is great because that makes it a lot, more, lot easier to understand as well. And what, what you get back from ChatGPT, like when you put this in, you're getting something useful back that you can use for creating this content. So I think it's great. So how much would you, you're using like for your, I know you said you're doing a lot of carousels and stuff like that. Do you use like uh, ChatGPT to come up with what goes on the carousels, kind of the content and things like that? Is that kind of how you use it or do you, t do you find yourself tweaking it a lot? Yeah. So for me, the carousels that I create, I usually about how I use AI. So it's a lot faster if I just detail how I use AI because that is actually my process. I just need to capture it. Um, so I always say, right, don't use AI for the sake of it. Use it when you need to. So this is, a, mm. for example, is a great strategy for a founder of a company that has no idea where to start. This is great. It's a great starting point. Whereas for a creator who already knows his audience or her audience and already knows how to win, then just stick to what works best for you. So I created this with an idea of someone who might not know where to begin. And this could be a great starting point. So even here, you, I included like 100 hook examples. So now ChatGPT has a combination of my framework, the hooks, the kind of parts of the funnels, what I do, and then the themes. Now this is a good prompt because you're combining all of the best uh, inputs that you have and your knowledge into one prompt. And then you see the results from here. Mm, yeah, that's really interesting. I think I, I like the hook examples as well. So when you have this, let's say we would like to write based on this, we get like what, if you write a post, you can come up with an example for it. Like what, a, maybe for yourself, like something you would do, what would that look like? Like taking some of this kind of framework or the, this matrix that we have here and bring it into ChatGPT and see what it comes out with. Yeah. So let's t just take a look because again, right, it's about testing and just make sure your custom instructions are off. Otherwise it usually... Um, messes up with your prompt. And then let's see what it gives me. So whenever you generate output, of course, AI is still 
growing and evolving, your output will not be consistent and it's always going to be a surprise. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's the fun part. <laughs> that's, why, that's, why the output like, that's why you have to go back and forth. That's why you have to go back and forth and reiterate. And sometimes I feel like, sometimes specific tools for the use case is better than ChatGPT. Like for blogging, I don't like, for example, I do writing, I do, I have my videos. I don't like ChatGPT too much for this. I, I use it a lot for ideation things like this, but for, and also like if I have a video and getting like a summary or takeaways or action steps or something from a video or something like that, or from a transcript, that's really good for this. But writing a full blog post is going to take me so many steps because of the <laughs> limits and also because it's not writing in the way, it's not writing like 100% SEO optimized, it taking, it's not great. So I use like content at scale or specific tools for doing these things. Uh, that's more specific than also you would expect also it's a more expensive tool like it's for replacing writers. Writers are really expensive. Uh, so you should not expect a $20 a month tool to 100% replace a writing team or something like that. That's that's not going to happen, but you can do a lot with it as you see here. Like you can you can even train your team to do these things and so you can have people I ideate with this tool and do it. But even yourself, you said you don't because sometimes it's faster to just do your process yourself because you have the knowledge, right? You you might just put in what you know on, on these carousels or in these posts. So yeah, that, that's yeah. funny. But if you start from, you never have writer's block or something with AI. I think that is also a cool thing because if you feel straight, stuck, you can just go to ChatGPT and ask for some more ideas. Definitely. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's a tool. It's how you want to use it. You don't have to use it if it doesn't serve your purpose. If you think you can get to your end result in a much faster time, then do it. <laughs> so I I always advocate use AI when it's going to add value to, to your workflow. If it's going to hamper it, then maybe not. So it's always yeah. a balance between human and AI. So we can see here that it's a really amazing prompt. I think this prompt is one of my favorites. Uh, sometimes it takes yes. a bit of time to load, but you can see it gives you the top of funnel hook and then you have the one-liner, right? And then it has a bucket of trending topics. So five simple lessons to elevate your copywriting. I'm actually need to with AI or why traditional copywriting rules are not set in stone and then we can do a, a, a copy about it or like a character about it. So the format can change, but this gives you like top level ideas and then you can take it and at least have a starting point with which otherwise you would be a bit stuck about. So mm -hmm. great springboard, a great way to start. A great way for people to begin. Yeah. What do you, what, what would you say, like in terms of carousels, what goes into like a performing carousel on LinkedIn? What do you think uh, based on what you have done and what do you see other LinkedIn creators do? Yeah. For myself, right? The number one rule is that every page should hook the reader to the next page. So again, it's about conversion copywriting, right? When you have one page, what is coming next? So for example, I did a recent post with um, Celeste. Celeste is a super, super cool creator. She does AI content strategy and together we built this carousel post. Again, this page was meant to be a hook, right? Most people know who is Alex from Izzy. If you don't already know, he's an entrepreneur who is really, really like successful this. in sharing really it. This is like, if I saw this and <laughs> I didn't know who you are, I would probably <laughs> check it out because I know who right. Alex is and I know his content is pretty, pretty good and he, and most people will know. And you say how to crush Alex's 100 million formula. That's, yeah. I mean, most people would want to check the next one, right? Yeah. So again, what is the hook, right? Your clickbait hook. Sometimes you have to use it on LinkedIn. I don't use it all the time, but whenever you, when there's a chance and if it's used skillfully, it can generate you the eyeballs and the leads. So in this case, copy was strategically written to attract the audience, visual, yeah. the color, and then GPT. Yeah, to be sure, I, I do like that. It's si simple design, but also powerful. It's like clean. I like that. It's yeah. like very clean and you have your images of you. So you build also a little brand authority from this post. And uh, yeah, it's great, actually. I think yeah, it's good. So, so let's... So that was super amazing in collaborating with thing on this post. And I'm doing a session with her. I'm doing a session with her as well, actually. Oh, so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So actually leveraging the power of another creator's profile and their expertise is something that you can consider as well. That's what I've done. I've done a lot of brand collabs because it's combining both of our knowledge to create something even better and bigger. And your audience will see that because they will gain value from both yourself and the other creator you bring on board. That so, is so that is powerful to collaborate, <laughs> like for bigger things. I mean, there's some work involved in this. You can have templates for these things as well. I'm not talking like just a like AI templates, but you can have Canva templates to just put in your information for, I, I assume you use something like Canva to design this, right? Yes. 
Yeah. Ex sure. Exactly. Like just use Canva and then you can do something like that. You can have different ver different style of templates and then you can do it a lot faster. I think that's also powerful. But let's go through this a little bit because yeah. a lot of things can, for example, the the headline, that could, you can generate different ones but with the uh, chat. You can give you suggestions based on this headline. So that's how AI comes into this, whether you write everything yourself or you use AI for the full thing and just reiterate. You can yeah. do it either way, I think. Definitely. So even like... A carousel in itself is a conversion copy. <laughs> the way you get people to read yeah. it is to make sure that every page has a hook and it draws you in, right? So if you give people the context yeah. of Alex and you put numbers, numbers again are another way to hook your audience in. The strong visual as well. And then it talks about what the book uh, includes, which is how he generates 20,000 leads. So we broke down the three-step creation process into a really simple framework. So every page has one single message. Every message is clear simple to understand and it's in a really digestible format and that's actually what you want in a carousel some people make the mistake of using a lot of content you can have a limit uh, you have like 27 in, in, on Instagram carousel are like 10 I think 10 images 10 photos or something like that um, what is not is can, there a limit it, on LinkedIn no it can I built like a 50 page carousel before so it, it's far from my all. god <laughs> that's crazy that's, that's really cool that you can do that so it's more like content I mean I think that that makes sense also because the LinkedIn audience they want more more content rich uh, stuff and that's different different on Instagram this attention attention span I think is shorter yeah but, then, so the what, is the audience is, looks, yeah. Uh, what is the format sometimes I've seen square carousels and sometimes I've seen like these ones which is I like Looks like story format almost. Yeah, and the story format like this size. I forgot the size, but I could find it later. But basically, this I'm size thin or something like that. Like that's this size the... works for me because you can squeeze more information. If you are square, it's still a bit limited. In terms I mean, of... Does it take more space? Well, I feel yeah. this might take more space also, like the, to look better in the feed. But I, I, I don't know what the appropriate. But I, I'll link it below as well. Maybe I'll link this example as well that we are talking about, so I can link yeah. it up in the description so people can just check it out for for themselves. But is cool so you have the yeah so you have the basically going through this but this is so what is a good starting point because this is a 27 that's like overwhelming maybe for someone to start maybe like a 10 10 10 page one or something is good yeah or 10, my first carousel that did well that went mini viral was a seven page carousel so again uh, like every piece of content you create right it has to add value every page has to add value so in this case we captured the audience we told a narrative and we gave them examples of how you can do it with each part. So this playbook in itself is an example of how you can use AI to create content, which is great because of today's chat. So over here, what we have done is included a tool called Harpa. Harpa allows you to pull basically content from the website or the browser that you have open. So in this case, if you're on Quora and you're searching for something like AI content creation, you can get Harpa to pull the top 10 questions that people are searching for. And that huh. gives you an idea of what kind of content can you create for your audience, right? Again, Harpa on, like extension or something like that? Uh, yes, it's a free Chrome extension. It's super cool. You have to check it Very out. Cool. Um, yeah, and awesome. the, what That's it does nice. is that it pulls the, the top 10 questions for you, right? And then now you can think, okay, now I have some content topics. What can I do with it? Now you have a magic sauce to work with, right? We also included prompts in the comments, which then allow people to try it out for themselves, which makes it super actionable, right? Then, what we also give is what makes a headline successful. And now you think, okay, now I have the content, right? What do I do with it? So I decided to, to think like, if Alex wanted us to create headlines that tapped on recency, uh, proximity, and for example, unusual things, right? How do I create a prompt for it? So I had to reverse engineer his process with AI. So that was mm -hmm. when I, I had to experiment because I didn't know how to get there and never experimented. And Great. I found a way to basically get an example of each of his kind of frameworks as a one-liner. And then I gave it the context and the topics from my previous uh, half hour searches. And I combined them both to create compelling headlines. So now you, you, you can see the way I think, right? Okay, now I have interesting content for with AI. Now I'm going to create a prompt to combine it with top performing headlines uh, with a recency or relevancy effect. Then now what can I do with it? So now you have your cook based on the content that you have searched on Hapa. Then you can think like, okay, how do you retain them? So you need different kinds of content, right? You have this, you have steps, you have sorry, you have like mixed kind of content. And then you can combine step one and step two with step three. And then you get a mega prompt. 
So that is actually how you can wow. create content at scale using Alex wow. Hawaii's method. This is crazy. This is really cool, actually. I'm just, I'm getting, uh, the reason I asked about this, I mean, this is like, I'm getting a lot of ideas for what I can do as well, because I have a lot of long form content. I can turn it into a lot of carousels for, for my, especially LinkedIn would be powerful, I think for my audience as well, for people I want to attract new audience as, as well. So I think that's just taking a lot of like my virtual summit system or other things I've done, like with list building and just, I have so many, so much content on my site that I should just turn into turn into carousel. So I'm sure if you're watching this, you might get some ideas from what Audrey is sharing here. Seriously, really, this is a really good, good system and also nice way to put it. I think this might be one of the more valuable carousels I, I've seen as well. It's 27, 27 slides. I see most like shorter ones when I see in my feed, but do, does this like get engagement all the way through, you think? I don't know what you can see, if you can yeah, see the stats. So or you can see like the that. stats. 29K impressions with 16 reposts. Not bad. The one that I created before was about 35k with 26 repos and this was me explaining what makes a good landing page and then explaining how I use AI to create it. So it combined yeah. again strategic experience with AI execution. That is uh -huh. my expertise at human and AI, human and AI. Even for here, it's, it's like human mindset with AI execution. How do you do that? Uh, that is a yeah. beautiful blend. Yeah. This is what you're talking about today as well, but what, <laughs> what's, what do you feel some mistakes are people are making when they are trying to do this, uh, have this approach? Maybe they are, the big mistake I would say is like, they're just using AI without any input or something like that, but okay, let's leave that. That's a given. You, you're not going to get great output if you give it, you give bad input to it, to the AI. So what do you have to say there? What's some mistakes people are making when they are using this approach or anything you see your clients or people in, people in the LinkedIn world or whatever you're hanging out? Yeah, so I think the main mistake number one is that they don't, there is no thought behind the prompt and you can see in the output. The reason I say that is because sometimes the content sounds blocky, chunky, and overly excited. And you can obviously tell it's not genuine. It can be genuine, but it may not be executed in the best way. So it's really, it, it can turn off certain uh, readers, especially those who, know that it's AI or even if they don't know if it's AI, it still sounds a little off. And in the comments section, if you see AI generated comments, it's also really obvious. Um, again, if you're trying to engage with a creator, they know if you're using AI because People they can are see. using AI generated <laughs> comments. I mean, I, I, I get you can, you can do it, but to write a thoughtful comment doesn't take that long. Like, yeah, uh, but they I are mean, many I, AI generated use... comments. I don't use it. Okay, if you wanted to get some ideas, I get it. Like you maybe wanted to write a really thoughtful one and you wanted to actually have some ideas what you can do. But usually when you read a post or checking out the post, you're probably getting the you're getting the initial idea of what you can write. And that takes you maybe one minute, two minutes, maybe five minutes if you're writing it really in like something really good. But yeah, I, it wouldn't take too much longer. If you wanted to write something amazing, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, it's probably too much time you're spending on it. Yeah. On each post you're gonna, on, if, if the content isn't um, thoughtful and you're just producing content for content's sake, you realize that it's not very effective. That's lesson number one. So if, it, yeah. if, it, there, if there is no thought behind the content, it will not convert, it will not work. Um, I think, yeah, I think yeah. people are starting with the, starting the wrong end sometimes. They're starting like, yeah, let's, let's start just creating it, but that's not going to do yeah. that well if you don't know where, where it's leading to. So in your example with this really amazing carousel, what was the intention behind it? More than, of course, drive awareness. That was the intention for both of you to get more followers or whatever, or was there some other intention like drive people to your website or get clients or what was the thought process? Yeah. So for a combined carousel post, usually there is only one goal, which is rich because if you were to sell a certain product or service, you need to make sure that you're aligned. In this case, my goal was to highlight Celeste's kind of profile and her content creation abilities and to bring value to my audience. So there was visibility. If I were to create a different kind of post that basically, for example, shows all the prompts that I have, that will be to build expertise and credibility and get conversions because people know that I can build prompts. So every content you create should only have one goal and you should be very clear about what that goal is. And then you drive towards that. A third kind of post would be like feel good posts, right? Like emotional, personal posts. What is the point of that? It's not about sharing how my life has been. It's about positioning myself in a certain way in someone's mind 
so that they think and feel that I'm a certain person and they want to work with me because they feel my warmth, they feel that I'm genuine and they feel that I'm real. Every content you put out there has intention and you need to know what is the intention behind each of them. No, I like that a lot. This is great. And in terms of just before you wrap this one up, like, do you use any, we have talked a lot about ChatGPT in this session, of course, but do you use any other tools? Like you mentioned Harpo, of course, like the extension, which seems to really useful. I encourage, I'm going to link it up as well and try it out myself. Yeah. But any other tools you use? You show Notion, of course, you're using it because that was kind of, you have all the different things there. I don't know if you're using the AI of Notion, but. Yeah. Notion AI is pretty good as well, but I use GPT more, so I don't have to toggle between both. Yeah, but the exactly. other tool that I found recently and many other LinkedIn creators are also using is this tool. Have you heard of it? I have seen this one recently, actually. So I'm glad you brought it. No, no one has mentioned it yet uh, on a session. So I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. You can, can yeah. What, what, so what do you do with this one? Just to so explain to the audience. Initially, I was just using uh, any other note taker, right? And the note taker, what it does is that it provides you with a transcript out of, of your meeting minutes and then um, you can consolidate the kind of next steps, right? What this does, I think it's called Sybil, is that it's an amazing tool that analyzes your audience's pain points, motivation, fears, and desires on the sales call. Identify moments in which they are engaged or distracted. Um, or are, so it takes or, from your Zoom call, like Zoom or Google Meet or something like that you might be using for your calls, right? And it takes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, does it integrate directly and just instantly transcribes it and uh, analyzes basically the transcript. I guess that's how it would work, right? Yes. And it analyzes the exact moments in which your video, right? If your prospect yeah. isn't responding to you or it's a bit zoning off, it snags the points in which it's distracted. That's that is amazing. Really, that is really useful for anyone who's doing like for you or yourself, you have clients, right? You're, you have an agency. So for you, it's really, really valuable. And for anyone who sells maybe coaching or anything like that, where you jump on the call with people, I think it's great. Or even like courses where you maybe have a call with someone. And yeah, you can ask uh, Slack as well. You can get the stuff. So it's Yeah. Cool. And, the, and the amazing part is it has this AI email function where you can just tap in one click, right? And then it has next steps and you can send it to your clients immediately. So you don't have to spend time summarizing the meeting minutes and you have yeah. everything done for you. This is a great example of a specific tool that probably is built like you, they're using some like things behind the scenes to make it really, really useful. This is a full SaaS, it seems like, that they have built more than, they have built more than just on top of open AI, open API, basically. So that's how this seems to work. I mean, a lot of companies are just building on top of it, but they don't have too much other features. But this seems to have really useful features where they have integrated hit a lot of different tools already. So that's, you will uh, love it. Check it out. <laughs> it, it is a life changer. Yeah, I know. I link it up. And <laughs> yeah, maybe they have like, uh, maybe I should reach out to them to do a deal or something for the audience. But this <laughs> seems like really useful. So, and I guess you're using Canva and these other, like, but the AI features in Canva, how do you like the AI features in Canva, by the way? To your... Yeah, I think it's not bad. I haven't fully explored it yet. So uh, on my end, I'm still more of a copy and content. So I spend most of my time yeah. prompting for copy. But yeah. I have dabbled a bit with Canva's AI. I think it's pretty good, actually, for their magic creation systems. I think it's like an easy way. It's an accessible way because like, I, I love Midjourney and I, I think it's the, like, the time we are doing yeah. this is the best one. And they're going to have their own app eventually, so you move away from Discord. So that's also nice. But that, you can do the be best photorealistic stuff there. I also dabble like, with Wirestock, which is a great as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, DALI 3, I think it's... It's, I mean, it's accessible in in Bing or in uh, ChatGPT, mm -hmm. but it's uh, not it's not as good quality as Midjourney, at least in my opinion. Agree, agree. My, that might change. That might change at some point. So yeah, I guess you you mentioned also in, in the using Grammarly. That's the old, that's an old one, like Grammarly for. I mean, for anyone just getting better tone of, sometimes they change the grammar, of course, uh, but they change also like if you're writing passive English or not. You know, this it's it's quite useful actually to use it. That's been around for long, long time. Yeah. So before, before, <laughs> it has been around yeah. for quite some time. I oh, was sure. one of the early, early users. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know how long it's been around, but it's like early on with AI, that, like, but then after it's come more regenerative AI, I think that was the first thing because they, they did change a little bit and giving suggestions based on stuff. So I think that's an early generative AI tool really to, to help you write better and things like that. But to wrap this one up, two final questions. What's your number one piece of advice you would give to a creator to get started when it comes to implementing 
AI in their business and just using it on a day-to-day basis? I think the number one advice that I would give you is to actually set time to experiment. I know a lot of people say that it's easy to adopt AI and it's not that hard. But if you don't set time and give yourself that space to breathe and play around with it, you'll never be able to fully maximize it. So for me, when I first started, I spent hours trying to figure out how does prompting work? How does it, what can I do with it? But once you figure out um, how you can utilize it to your advantage, right? And it becomes almost like part of your life, right? You don't have to think too much about prompting. You don't have to think too much about how to integrate it. It just flows. So when you get comfortable with it, that's when you get creative with it. And I think that's where the magic happens. Yeah, for sure. 100% agree. You need to kind of get in there and use it. And the final thing is, was there any question that I asked uh, or that I didn't ask, but you, you wanted me to ask you or any final words of wisdom for everyone here? Yeah, I, um, like I said at the beginning and I will say at the end, I think the future is hybrid. We don't have to be afraid of AI. We can exist together. You just need to be able to combine human strategy with AI execution. And that's really how you can get quality output at scale. Um, don't be afraid. Just give it a shot. And then you will see like, so much, so much improvement in terms of your cost, time, and your resource savings. I think uh, most of us who are power users of AI can uh, really, really, really attest to that. Uh, awesome. This has been a really valuable session. Thanks so much, Audrey, for sharing all this value and making it really actionable for everyone here. I think, you know, if you're, if you're enjoying this session, do leave a comment with your biggest takeaways. Maybe you're something you will implement based on this session. And go check out Audrey on LinkedIn, that's why she primarily creates content. I, I drop a link as well. Audrey, Audrey Shia, right? Just your handle. And uh, yeah, and, and if you have any questions, do let me know and subscribe to the channel for more. Like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Bye.